Well, shalom. Welcome, friends, to Makeup and Movies, your favorite series on the internet that you never know when it's coming because of who I am as a person. Uh, so you may be asking yourself, why is there an empty chair? Uh, and the answer is, I have a special guest today. I would like to introduce you to my friend, Sarah. Hi. <laughs> also known as Better Off Red here on YouTube. You guys have heard me talk about her before. Sarah is also a YouTuber. She tells stories too. She does crew trime. Crew trime? Crew trime? Crew trime. But today, she's gonna review a movie with me. I'm excited. So today, thank you for having me, by the way. Thanks for being here. <laughs> We're gonna review the movie Burlesque. Burlesque. Starring Cher, Christina Aguilera, and, and this, this guy. guy. Hello. <laughs> so Burlesque is the clumsy Devil Wears Prada meets Coyote Ugly tale mm -hmm. of a small town girl who's trying to make it in the big city. And it has every cliche you could possibly think of. Even the, oh no, I'm a struggling performer and my money got stolen from my freezer thing that we've seen in Coyote Ugly. So fun fact, the director of this movie is Steven Anton, uh -huh. whose sister Robin is the founder of the Pussycat Dolls. So he basically was like, well, my sister successfully created a, a musical group, right? So I could make it into a movie, right? Yeah. Di no, he didn't. Alas, he didn't. This movie sucks. Yeah, I hate to say it guys, but even with all the great vocal performances from Cher and Christina, the spectacular dance numbers, the dance numbers are actually amazing. It's it's a beautiful movie. Yeah, the cinematography is great. All of that still doesn't make a good movie. Burlesque still falls short on the tomato meter. It has a rating of like 36%, just because of the, the cheese factor, the cliches. Come back inside! The bad acting. I still have that full box of cookies. The lack, complete lack of character development, lack of relationship development, and just overall awkwardness. awkwardness. I ain't gonna go. Stay. <laughs> so, put on your booby tassels, kids. Welcome to burlesque. <laughs> I forgot to say it with you. Oh, you're. Hey there. I'm Trish Tickleback. And today's episode of Makeup and Movies is brought to you by Audible. For those who don't know, Audible is the leading provider. Hey, Jamie. I'm just what are you doing? doing the Audible sponsorship. But that's, that, that's my job. No, no, it's mine. I, uh, I got hired to do it on your channel, so. No, I literally like landed this brand deal and I'm about to shoot the sponsorship. I think it's really fine if I just- Ladies, don't fight. I don't, I don't understand, is she doing the ad? We just thought you could use some help with it. Okay, well I wanna do it myself because I like did all the work to land the deal. <laughs> you know what, I can mm -hmm. see so. there's some tension here, so. Just go on your merry way. Take my okay. um, and how about we just do two takes? Thanks, Trish. We'll do two takes. <laughs> and you know, if they like mine better, then Thank that's... y'all. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. Well, as you may have heard from my colleague, <laughs> Audible is the leading provider in spoken word entertainment. I don't know if you guys know this, but Audible doesn't just have audiobooks anymore. I know, right? They have thousands of other audio titles. They also have podcasts, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances. And they have podcasts. They also have podcasts. I literally asked you not to be in this video. I love Audible because it helps people get more stories and more information. And although I've said this many times before, I will say it again, it is so much easier having somebody read things to you instead of reading them yourself. Yeah, it's way easier. It really is. Okay, you know what? You just do the ad yourself, okay? okay. I'm hot. You sure? I'm done, I'm annoyed. Now, what Jamie forgot to say is that as an Audible member, you will get one free credit every month, and it's good for any title in the premium section, meaning the latest bestseller, the buzziest new release, or the hottest celebrity memoir. Have you read Dirty Rocker Boys? It's getting the list. If you're interested in signing up for Audible, you can visit audible.com slash Trish. Slash Jamie. I mean slash Jamie. Or text Jamie to 500-500 for your 30-day free trial. And now back to the show. Please don't ever come onto my set again. Oh, relax. Hey guys, we're back. The movie opens in every movie version of every small town ever, Dwight's Bar, <laughs> where we meet our main character, Allie, played by Christina Aguilera, and she is about to quit her job. I'm quitting! Just like in Coyote Ugly. Violet. Can we stop using the waitress quitting her job to pursue her dreams? 
But unlike Violet and Coyote Ugly, Allie is not leaving her job amicably. She's splitting because her boss, Dwight, uh, straight up isn't paying her or her coworker. It's a problem. You still haven't paid us for last month. Seems legit. She's gonna quit. Okay, she's gonna quit this job, but not before breaking out into a dance, song and dance number. She's gonna bust out into song, as you do when you quit your restaurant job. Yeah, that's what I did when I quit Outback Steakhouse. Mm. So she breaks into an Etta James song. Phenomenal. Sounds amazing. Get a feeling out of Her voice is the best part of this movie, of course. Wait, hold on. Nope, Stanley Tucci's the best part of this movie. Oh, sh well, we'll give him like second best. I will die on this hill. <laughs> That's my opinion! So while Christina is singing, we're also getting some cutaways to the burlesque dancers that are performing their best human centipede. No big deal. It's a little bit of foreshadowing, maybe, of what's gonna come. So, Allie makes her way to the bus station or train station, whichever one it is, is what I wanna say, so don't correct me, okay? She walks through gravel and high-heeled platform shoes. I thought she looked really cute, but Shelly and Marge, they're not feeling it. <laughs> so this next little scene is not terribly relevant, but it's a fun fact for me because Allie has arrived in LA, she's unpacking, and she's holding this little picture of what appears to be her and her mom. And Sarah Bear here, who is literally full of knowledge. <laughs> Nothing useful. <laughs> said that that is actually Christina Aguilera's real mom. Shelly, right? Mm -hmm. Her name is Shelly. Shelly. Not to be confused with Shelly from the bench. Mm -hmm. And we looked it up on IMDb and it's true. They used a real picture of Christina Aguilera's mom for this scene for some reason. So fun fact. So she's walking around LA looking for a job. Um. And anyway, she finally stumbles upon this burlesque club. You know, one of those like atmospheric holes in the wall where dreams turn into realities. So inside the lounge is Alan coming. Wash your mouth out with Jägermeister. And he is in full cabaret outfit. He's about to perform the Vilkaman. Wait, what? That's the opening number from Cabaret. Oh, I knew that. You might get distracted by all the eyeliner, <gasps> but don't, because you know who's on stage? Cher. The Cher. You know, the one who does this all the time. <laughs> she too has eyeliner on, okay? There's enough for everyone. You can share it. Alan Cumming shared with Cher. So Cher's up there shinging. The dancers are dancing. Christina is just mesmerized you can dream of coco she's like yes i want to dream of coco there's a lot of this <laughs> so there's a ton happening on stage we see julianne hoof mm -hmm. who you may know from dancing with the stars and then we get our first glimpse of the bartender jack who is going to end up spoiler alert as Allie's love interest throughout the movie so he and ally hit it off immediately with some cheesy banter what is a girl to flirt with to get from here to up there is this you flirting <laughs> with someone wearing more eyeliner than me not a lot of guy liner in Iowa, I guess? So Christina, nope, her name is Allie. Allie just walks backstage like she owns the place. And then this is where we meet Vincent, who is Tess, Cher's name by the way is Tess. We meet Vincent, who is Tess's business partner and ex-husband and all around disheveled, greasy. He looks very sweaty. He does look sweaty, yeah, sweaty's a good word. But I still own half this place. So he's worried about the financial situation of the club. Have you read this letter from the bank? Ugh. Which will come back later. We also meet Sean, played by Stanley Tucci. The incredible mm -hmm. Stanley Tucci. He's a very sassy fella. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. So now, 12 minutes into the movie, we have basically met every character in the cast. Yeah, I think there's only two other characters that they haven't introduced yet. Which, which is, is stupid. stupid. So Allie, introduces herself to test and by introduce herself I mean like accosts her while she's trying to put her lip gloss on and you are in my mirror because Oh, rude. But Tess is nice about it. She tells her, okay, leave your name and number with Sean and Sean will call you when the next audition is a sentence that Allie Clearly does not comprehend. He'll let you know when we're having our next audition When will that be exactly? I just told you. And I wrote here in my notes, we're already annoyed by her. We watched this last night and took notes over it, and I would say we were annoyed 30 seconds in. I hate her already. Um. So then we meet the movie's villain, Nikki, played by Kristen Wiig. Kristen Wiig. <laughs> that would have been so good. <laughs> played by Kristen Bell. She's super mean. Screw your mama. But that's okay, because Allie has a comeback that aged like milk. No one would ever know. Know what? That you're a dude. <laughs> so, Allie picks up a tray and just decides, I, I work here now. What are you doing? One night, if I'm 
lot 20 times better than boobs for brains over there. You don't have to pay me. And she's learning the moves while she's serving drinks to patrons. <laughs> totally normal waitress behavior. Also, did she fill out her W-4 form? No, she filled out nothing. This is important, okay? Pay your taxes. No resume, no background experience, no paper. Literally just picked up a tray, starts working there, and starts learning the moves while she's serving drinks to people. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot how much I loved Auric. It's yeah. glorious. So then we meet this guy, Marcus Gerber. He is a regular at the club. He's been a member since 91. A member since 91. So you're a hundred. Cool. <laughs> and it turns out his character is kind of the evil real estate guy and he really wants to buy the club. Because I lead with my final offer. Um, and it does come back, so pay attention. They are just planting all of the seeds available. Foreshadowing is like the number one director tool. Yeah. That and the shaky camera operating. Yeah, oh my god. We kept looking for scenes there where the camera wouldn't move so that we could recreate them and the camera never stops moving throughout the whole movie. <laughs> it's a joy. You should take some Dramamine before watching. <laughs> So then we get our first montage. It's a cool montage. It's basically just Allie studying up on, I don't know, burlesqueology. And apparently there's no computers, there's no Google. It's just all hard books. <laughs> she went to the library and found burlesque books. We got burlesque books. We got a lot of gazing off into the distance. We got Christina Aguilera's butt cheeks. All right, on the stage now, Kristen Bell. She has a dentist. I got a dentist. His name is Dr. McBoogers. Dr. Long John. I was wrong. Different guy. Wrong guy. So it's interesting that they have Kristen Bell lip syncing because she can actually sing in real life. We all know this. She plays Anna. Hello. We only have each other. Far cry from this character. So then we get this little scene where Tess ends up intercepting this tray of shots that is delivered. She doesn't want Nikki to take the shot because Nikki has a drinking problem. So not only does she have a drinking problem, she is always late and she is also super mean. What are you, my mother? I wonder if she's gonna get fired. <gasps> So then Allie pitches this idea to Tess and Sean. She's like, hey, what if we tried something else? Why don't we have the girls sing instead of lip sync? I get ways to make it better and I just don't understand why we can't just try something different. As if there's a we, because so far Allie's just a waitress still, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Cher's like, no, 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 shut up. This is above your pay grade. No, no, no. No, this is above your pay grade. I don't really get what that means. Yeah, Allie, that's, that's obvious. <laughs> so, in a not at all predictable chain of events, Allie's apartment <laughs> hole got robbed. Oh, oh no! no! God damn it! That's not at all like Coyote Ugly. So she's looking at the rubble, and they've broken the picture frame with the Shelly pick. Not the Shelly pick. Allie is devastated. She needs someplace else to live. So she packs up her one square suitcase and goes to somebody else's apartment. She's on the <laughs> steps crying. And then who pulls up on the motorcycle? Eyeliner bartender number one, Jack. Jack. Allie? Guy liner bartender is what she meant to say. Excuse me, <laughs> guy liner. Jack's really sweet. He like wants to console her, but the fake crying thing is a little too much for him. Please, please stop crying. Okay. Yes, please stop. So then Allie ends up staying with Jack and she finds out a couple things about him. First thing being that he is an all-star pianist. I wrote that. I did. They kind of have like this romantic chat. Their relationship is starting to blossom. Hey Jack, hey Jack, hey Jack. But personally, we just kind of felt like it was a little bit cheesy and it kind of should have been more like this. Hey Jack. Who clogged the toilet? I did. Jack, that's, there was a lot of poop in there. It was like a, an iceberg, but of poop, a poop iceberg. Thank you. You think that's a compliment? Yeah. Well, it's not, okay? You have a serious problem. It looked like it was dropped there by Paul Bunyan himself. Exactly. No, Jack, I'm serious, okay? I'm calling the GI doctor. Like right now. Get some sleep. <laughs> okay, I'll get sleep and you get us a new plunger. See, doesn't that just feel like it makes more sense? By the way, why does Christina Aguilera sleep with so much makeup on? Hey, Jack. Girl, wash your face. <laughs> hey, that's a book title. <gasps> the next morning, Allie has 
taken the liberty of making the coffee and she is prancing about with no pants on. Then she finds out that Jack is engaged to another lady. Your sister? Fiance. Oh, hell no. Yeah, that's right, he has a fiance who somehow lives with him most of the time, but like leaves no trace of herself when she goes on work trips. There's literally no evidence of a female living there. No clothes, no No shoes, makeup. No blow dryer. So anyway, Allie is shocked, obviously. You're straight? Allie, you can't just ask people if they're straight. So then Allie falls down. Because of course she does. She's the lead female protagonist. Like every single lead female protagonist does in every single movie we review on this channel. <laughs> So clumsy and endearing. <laughs> so relatable. Love me. <laughs> I think it's time for a break. You need to mix up your, your janks over yeah, there. I got a concoction <laughs> here. And when we come back. Auditions. Auditions with a Z. See you there. Hey, <laughs> we're back. And guess what time it is? It's audition time. Allie gets up on stage for the audition. She it's her time to shine and her moment to prove to Tess that she can be a burlesque girl and not just a waitress. Cut to her bumping and grinding on a chair. Yeah, she likes the chair, you know, mm -hmm. and that may work for you when you're alone in your restaurant, but it doesn't work for Tess. Hey, Dave, cut it. What? Hold on. Tess is super annoyed. She's not feeling it. She really just doesn't wow them. So Allie thoroughly unimpresses Tess in the first part of the audition. Tess is not having it. She's walking away. Allie straight up disrespects her and says, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Oh, yeah, Allie just has a lot of gall in this movie. She's got some nerve. Some nerve. You are talking to Cher. So anyway, Tess is like, all right, fine. You want to audition? Here's a bomb for you. Wagon wheel Watusi. Wagon wheel Watusi. <laughs> What's going on? And personally, Sarah and I, we just didn't really like this scene. Mm -mm. We felt like it could have made more sense if it was kind of like this. What is she doing? I think she's having a stroke. Hey, what gives? I can dance. And I think that it's sweet that you think you can. Hey, you know what? You're just mad because behind the door peaked at 97 on the billboard charts. Yeah, that's right. It's just your, your hair isn't really like how we do it here. Oh, okay. I see how it is. I'm not in the bang club. Well, I think it could make a difference for your look, Miss... Sandwich. You want to show me something? Show me that. Okay, fine. Which one you want to see? Wagon wheel Watusi. Wagon wheel Watusi, you got it. Told ya. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. She kind of talks like she's got something in the back of her throat. She's holding us. She's got some water in her mouth. Yeah, I like them. So Ali obviously nails Wagon Wheel Watusi. <laughs> because remember, she learned all the moves while she was waitressing. You got the job. And then there's just kind of this random little exchange between Sean and Ali. What is Ali short for? Alice. Alice? Well, welcome to Wonderland. <laughs> Get it? Also, since when is Allie short for Alice? It's still two syllables. That's not short. Same number of syllables. <laughs> Come on. You can do better than that, Steve. Her name should be Al. So Sarah pointed out in this next scene of Sean going through like the dancer's outfits that he basically plays the same character that he played in Devil Wears Prada, which I have never seen. First of all, it's criminal that you've never seen this, yeah. but it's like down, it's the same. He's sassy, he's backstage, he's dealing with all of the models and the dancers. He's grabbing clothes off of racks. He's throwing them at people to try on. Well, he's good at playing this character that he plays. Like I actually really liked him. He was like the only enjoyable part of this movie, I felt like. Like I said, he's a treasure. Look at this Palladio palette. 
Whoa. All right, guys, montage alert. <laughs> Allie's learning to be a burlesker. She's dancing in the street. She's rehearsing. <laughs> Cher is a makeup artist, apparently. When you are putting on your makeup, it's like you're painting your face. She can do a winged eyeliner on someone in like 2.5 seconds. Well, the reason she's actually doing Allie's makeup is because one night after the show, all the girls decide to go out for pizza. Do you guys wanna go grab pizza? Yes, please. Yeah. I'm starving. And because they didn't, how did you word it? Like Ex expressly invite her and then wait for her to get her act together. She doesn't go with them and she feels left out. It's like, all you had to do was just grab your bag and go. They didn't leave you. You just were dilly-dallying. <laughs> they just walked faster. <laughs> well, Cher comes in and does Allie's makeup. That brush isn't working because it's too old. And I don't know, she did pretty good. I kind of want to be Cher's makeup client. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what? I take that back. Pass. Back at the club, the trombone player has restless leg syndrome. <laughs> is that Bam Margera? What's he doing here? So Cher is throwing paper airplanes. <laughs> we find out that if Cher doesn't raise the amount of money on this piece of paper, she's gonna lose the club. If I can't raise the amount of money on that piece of paper by the end of this month, I lose the club. <laughs> Uh-oh, way to over explain. If I don't raise the amount of money on that sheet of paper. I don't raise the amount of money. She starts crying, which is really only made apparent through sounds because her face is frozen. <laughs> it's a fact, okay? Don't cancel us. We love her too. Yeah, we do. She's just, oh, no. She's just oh, go, frozen. Go, go, get frozen face. <laughs> All right, guys, so one night, Nikki shows up ready to perform, both drunk and late. Wait a minute, wait, hey, 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 what's in that? Iced tea. Typical Nikki. So they have no other choice. Allie has to take Nikki's spot, S-P-A-W-T. And Nikki is obviously devastated about this, so she devises a plan. She goes up into the sound booth and she tries to sabotage Allie's performance. She unplugs like the inputs. Somehow it ends up resulting in a bunch of feedback. <laughs> Which is actually not possible, okay, because their mics weren't on, right? They were lip They're lip syncing. So there would be no feedback. Um, but it's okay because Allie, she got something up her sleeve. She's got a voice. Oh, hold it. A Christina Aguilera powerhouse voice. Hey friends, uh, editing Jamie here. I just wanted to pop in here and say that this scene <laughs> literally made me emotional when I was editing this. I'm literally crying. Because Christina Aguilar's voice is so powerful and I feel like I didn't, we didn't talk about it enough when we were like talking through this. I slid my playhead like over this clip and I got chills all over my body before she even belted out that first note. I love Christina Aguilera even though I hate this movie. <laughs> okay, back to the show. So the band picks up on this impromptu acapella improvisation. I need a... Then she looks over at the band lovingly. Thanks, Bam Margera. She kills it and everyone loves it, except for Nikki, obviously. Allie apparently doesn't need a mic. Her voice can just project over the entire club and the band. With the live band. <laughs> but it's Christina Aguilera, so I can I can believe it, it's believable. Yeah, I feel like theoretically she probably could project over a live band, yeah. Yeah. but it's not that believable in a movie. So then Tess decides that Allie is such a good singer and there was such a good response from the crowd that she decides that Allie's singing is gonna be a regular thing on the show, even though she still hasn't. Where's the W4? She filled out a W4. <laughs> so guys, Allie's singing just really made her cool. Everybody starts being nice to her. Marcus is super into her. Jack's obsessed with her. Honey. <laughs> you have to wag your tail right now. And she even gets invited for pizza now when the girls go out. You wanna come? So she's just on top. Even Sean, who didn't like her that much at first, he even joins the list of the people who's being nice to Allie. Did you wear a wig? Oh, you mean that bang wig that you were wearing earlier for the first half of the movie that has suddenly disappeared now? <laughs> Where's the bangs, girl? Did you wear a wig? And on that note, let's take a break. When we come back, Allie turns into He-Man. Don't miss it. And we're back! Is that weird? Yeah, we're back. And uh, Allie is still there in the movie, keeping the comebacks coming. And we know a cow when we see one. 
So Jack is kind of falling for Allie, probably because she does stuff like this. Hey there, big boy. The man has a fiance, Allie. Yeah, remember? Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to build sexual attention between Jack and Allie, but it's just not there. <laughs> Mommy. Awkward. You should get that. You should get a life. And a better wig. Ah! So meanwhile, in yet another little mini montage, everything is weird. Ali's like spilling wine all over the pianos. And apparently this is set in like 1954 because she's wearing like a, one of those scarves on the back of a motorcycle. <laughs> so anyway, all the dudes in the audience are just salivating over this one performance. I can't remember what song it is. <laughs> but all I remember is the lashes. The lashes. <gasps> they are the worst lashes I've ever seen. <laughs> Zoinks. So Marcus comes up to Allie after the show one night and he gets her to get into his car by stealing her bag. Great flirting skills. There's also a very weird song choice playing in this little transit. Yeah, I didn't get the the soundtrack to this movie at all. There's like Madonna, Neon Trees. It's it's dated, but then you still can't tell when it's supposed to take place. Very strange. So he takes her to a rooftop bar. Rooftop! Mm. LA looks gorgeous from up here. And then he tries to impress her by telling her how he owns the air. You see that strip mall down there? I own everything above it. There is nothing above it. Exactly. She's not impressed because she's not like other girls. So you own air? Right. I bought the air. Uh, and how many girls have you used that line on? None who ever called me on it. You're talented enough to get whatever you want, and I'm smart enough to help make it happen. Yeah, that kind of sounds like what my manager said to me when I signed a contract. Red flag. <laughs> so back at the club, Sean's just shaming and grabbing. We also start to see Christina, you know, falling into her role as the singer of the show now. And really, we felt like her singing just changed the whole vibe of the show. It lost its vintage quality. Yeah, some of the numbers were just maybe like too current. It just didn't make sense in the context of a burlesque show. So now we're gonna get another montage. Allie's gaining fame. She's in the newspaper. Everybody in the dressing room's looking at it. Marcus is giving gifts to Allie. Jack is jealous. So is Nikki. Everybody's jelly. So what if I'm getting a little male attention? You're getting a lot more than a little. Not from anyone that matters. Their relationship is developing, kind of. Then they body shame Coco. The only thing the major is the size of Coco's ass. How dare you? Jealousy is unbecoming, and so is your wig. So one night after work, Tess decides that she needs to rehearse a number. I'm gonna stand my ground. It's very flash dancey, very blue, very dramatic. Again, does not fit the rest of the vibe of the movie. It's like, did Cher have a single and they better put it in the movie to promote it? It sounds like it came from Cher's album and that it was not written for this movie. I've been Also, fun fact, the internet says that she sang that live in one take. I guess I could believe that. Did she though? So guys, meanwhile, Nikki is just the worst. I will not be upstaged by some slut with mutant lungs! Then leave. Goes off on Tess, she's throwing a fit. She just, she can't handle that somebody has replaced her, so she quits. I quit! And then all kinds of stuff is going wrong. Jack and Allie are fighting. Allie has bangs again. There they are. They keep coming and going. She's throwing pillows. It's just, it's getting stressful. The one night Julianne Huff's character, Georgia, is getting married in a tiny little nightgown. And things start to heat up betwixt Jack and his fiance. You know what, you're right. We should definitely start thinking about our futures. And I might just be looking at mine right now. And also between Cher and Sean. Spicy. Get a room. Oh, Helen coming, we love you. So after the wedding, Allie and Jack are really flirting full on. I ain't got it. No, whoa, no. <laughs> really uncomfortable. Allie has definitely mastered that coy laugh. <laughs> Yeah, Christina Aguilera is not the greatest actress, but she definitely mastered the giggle to serious transition. <laughs> they kiss and they just stare at each other very closely for a while. Get a room. 
then I, I, I guess they're together. Allie has finally fallen for him. It had to be those jammies. <laughs> That would have done it for me. So then we cut to Christina Aguilera singing this very romantic love song, um, which provides as the background music for yet another montage. Another montage. <laughs> How many is that now? Like four? This particular montage though is of their blossoming romance. Mm -hmm. So I got Jack in a skipper hat. Avoid that. Lamenting about his failed songwriting career. I thought I was supposed to do something important with my life. And I got to LA and nothing. While this montage is just beautiful and blissful, it all comes crashing down. I knew it! When Jack's fiance, played by Quinn from Glee. Quinn from Glee. What's her real name? Who cares? <laughs> she comes home and she's upset. Allie dips. Yeah, Allie's like, all right, I'm out of here. So, sh <coughs> <coughs> so she goes to hang out with Marcus and she just really wonders what he's doing with this little toy city that he's building. What is this? It's a model. Uh, yes, thank you. Got it, that's, thank you. That's what we weren't sure of. So Allie finds out about Marcus's plan to buy the, you know, burlesque club and she is very upset. Does Tess know about this? She's like, you know what? I don't like you anymore. You're the wrong guy. It just makes you the wrong guy. She takes her bang wig and she dips out. So it's the club's final night before the bank seizes it and essentially gives it to Marcus. Or I think it's that Tess's hand is forced to sell to Marcus. Got to it. save it. Yeah, there's some sort of... There's, it's a bank situation, it's complicated business, okay? Allie tries to warn Tess, but she's too busy drinking her feelings and being a hypocrite, carrying a giant bottle of Patron upstairs alone. How are you gonna yell at Nikki when you are carrying a bottle of Patron up to drink it in your office? This good. Not very diplomatic share. So Allie barges into Tess's office and she finally is able to tell her that Marcus has that little scheme, right? He owns the air, remember? Have you ever heard of air raids? No, I've never heard of air rights. So they come up with a plan. They go see Josh Brolin's dad, who I guess also owns air. Or no, he wants to buy the air. He buys the air. It's something to do with air rights. I'm sure a lot of you in the comments will know. Actually, I'm sure you know what it's about. I think it's about the view. Property limiting how tall things can be so that it doesn't... Whatever. Point is, they devised this plan with Josh Brolin's dad. Your beautiful million dollar ocean and city views are just gonna vanish into thin air. Vanish. Because tomorrow I am going to sell my club to this developer and his 20 stories are gonna be well underway by the time you start selling. And so, I think that we should talk. I'd listen to her. So, Cher goes back to Vincent. You remember Vincent, right? Disgusting! Sweaty, disheveled, exasperated, greasy hair. Pinky ring, Vincent. You gonna shoot me? Please. So she comes back, presents Vince with a check and says, don't worry, I sold the air above the club. I was able to buy you out. And Vince wonders where the money came from. Thin air. <laughs> <laughs> you see what she did there. So everything starts kind of falling into place. Nikki comes up to Tess to apologize. She's like, do you wanna let me work here? And Tess is like, okay, fine, I forgive you. Everything is working out so well. Even Ali and Nikki are smiling at each other. Jack comes up to apologize. No, Jack, you can't borrow my eyeliner again. Get your own. It's linked in the description box. Anyway, he's trying to apologize with his teeth. She forgives him, but the question is, do you forgive the wig? Oh, Jack. Because we don't. Nope. It's real wiggy. So anywho, Jack tells her that he has finished a song and that she can't hear it, but she can sing it. Can I hear it? No. You can sing it. <laughs> Everyone can sight read. Yeah, I right? can totally sing songs I haven't heard. So the song is called Show me how you burlesque. Underneath the city lights. They perform this song for the end of the movie. It's the finale and it's a great performance. <laughs> Oh, but it's left us with a lot of questions. Okay? Yeah, like why, first of all, why do I not believe that Jack's character wrote this song? <laughs> Just doesn't seem like a song he would come up with. Why does Georgia have abs immediately after her wedding that she was pregnant at and now she's not anymore? Yeah, it was like, what, three days ago that her wedding was and she was showing? Why is the stage six times larger than it was at the beginning of the movie? I think that's because they sold the air so they could afford Makes sense. Why did they choose this song that does not fit the vintage vibe of the club? <laughs> yeah, just because you're saying the word burlesque over and over doesn't make it fitting for a burlesque yeah. show. And then the final part of the song and the movie were left with a spectacular vocal run that Christina Aguilera does. <laughs> And that's actually the one that everyone tries to do on TikTok. Oh, interesting. I wonder if I could do it. Hmm. Nailed it! 
And by the way, the movie's over. That's it. That's the most <laughs> abrupt movie ending ever. All the conflicts were resolved literally in the last like 30 seconds. And instead of ending kind of gradually, they just play a song and the movie's over. Credits. The last thing that really excited me was that it appears that I am related to someone who was on the production team of this movie. The loft assistant, yes. Mm -hmm. I come from a long line of loft assistants. Runs in the family. So that's it. That was pretty hard for us to get through last night. It was a late night. I think it was like seven to midnight. We paused it every 30 seconds because we had something to say for like every frame of the movie. Yeah, there's a lot to pick apart. Mm -hmm. The box office budget was 55 million doll hairs. Oh my god. Opening weekend in the US, 11. 0.9 million really? doll hairs. I totally thought people would maybe not like the film, but that they would want to see it. Hmm. Like I thought it would gross more at the movie theaters. And the cumulative worldwide gross, 89.5. Oh, so they made money. Okay. I would have felt really bad for Cher and Christina if they had lost money on this. So let's check out some reviews, shall we? This review comes from an IMDb user named Penelope, entitled, No plot whatsoever, two hours of my life. I won't get back. I'm really wondering, how can a movie be almost two hours long and have zero plot? I've never seen anything like this. It's fascinating. It's a bad movie, but not bad enough for you to actually stop watching. That is so true. That is true, but there is plot. Yeah, there's plot. The, they're gonna lose the club. This one cracks me up. This is a review from Grants with two S's, subject, avoid. I generally don't like musicals, but there have been some exceptions across the universe. The Rocky Horror Picture Show, Mary Poppins, The Sound of Music, My Fair Lady, Chicago. It sounds like you do like music. Yeah, it sounds like you can list more than the average person. The music is also pretty bad. I don't agree that the music's bad. I think it just wasn't fitting. A lot of it wasn't fitting. Like in the beginning, it was all these old vintage sounding songs with like a record crackle. I've got a dentist. <laughs> and then they introduced all these weird like 2010 sounding songs. So that's it for us guys. What did you think about this movie? Did you think it was romantic? Or did you find it as uncomfortable as we did? What did you think? Yeah, what did, what did, what did you think? No, I mean you, Sarah. Oh, me. <laughs> I don't hate it. Mm -hmm. Costumes, the dancing, the makeup, although those lashes, unforgivable. <laughs> I like the spectacle of it. It's very disjointed when Cher just like bust out a single. Disjointed is a good word. Yeah, I agree. I think it's um, it's a guilty pleasure for me. It's entertaining. I like kind of the cheesiness of it, but there's a quote from Cher that I found on IMDb that says that she felt this could have been a much better film, pinning the blame on its writer slash director, Steve Anton. Terrible director, really terrible director, and really terrible script. She also added that had it been shorter, it would have squeaked by and been a good popcorn movie. Yeah, it was long. It was long. It was it's long. Two hours long. Every dance number made it in. <laughs> so guys, that's it for us. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me on your channel. Thank you for being here. I wish next time when we get together, we're gonna do one for her channel and maybe do a crew time. Crew time. As always, leave your comments, questions, concerns, and injuries I should be aware of in the comment section down below. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. As always. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I waited. Did she do the workplace climate survey? Did she take the personality test? Did she do the sexual harassment training? It seems very important in a yeah, place like she this. Yeah, she didn't We've melded our minds. We did. You don't have dreams, you have movies. Wait, what? <laughs> Fair. I gotta contour this big ol' swollen schnoz. God, I hate that I'm blind. How many minutes of footage are we at? So the next scene has Allie crying on the step. St steps on the steps. <laughs> the steps. <laughs> Crying on the steps. You want to audition? Wagon wheel Watusi. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I think we need more context. I got a dentist. I can't tell you. Hang on Nobody a second. Can I can't tell you. Wagon, Wagon wheel Watusi. Typical Nikki. Hang on, start over, because I was looking at you weird and she also groaned. Oh. <laughs> All chaps are assless. Are they? See how blind you are. Whoa. They're wow. also. You really can't see. Yeah. How much longer do you think you want to work on that until you want to eat something? I think we should finish it. I think we can, because we're done with makeup, we just have to get through the script. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs>
because he was like, oh yeah. So Sherry is. You should get that. You should get a life and a better wig. Okay, fine. Which one you want to see? No, actually, Ali, I have your up. <laughs> Ali, I have your welcome package, and don't forget to fill out your W four before you leave today. Hey, you know what? You're just mad. Oh. Sorry, I'm sorry. I was in the trap. <laughs> I'm trying to get.